I completely reject the notion, and this is very much in line with Michael I was saying, is that we're fated as a country to have a rematch between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. I don't want it. I know all of you don't want it. Nobody wants it. Um, and I don't particularly relish a, a, a race between Joe Biden and Ron DeSantis. Right. You know, but, it, but at the end of the day, um, when we watch this year unfold, I think this will be a tumultuous year globally, domestically. And as it, as it turns out, I think it will, will, will reveal um, a lot of things that happen in our politics that aren't, that aren't being talked about uh, on television right now and the commentary shows. But I, but I think a lot is going to happen. I've never been one to say that uh, uh, Trump will run again because I'm not convinced he will. I think it's he's placeholding for a host of reasons. Um, I'm watching to see when when the trigger happens for him and he decides to get serious and actually say, OK, I'm actually going to do this. Um, it's a little bit of how he approached 2016. He really didn't want to run for president. He kind of filled out the paperwork. And next thing you know, he had a campaign and all of a sudden, oh, you mean I won? Um, so I think there's a little bit of that going on. Um, DeSantis right now on paper seems to be the, the go-to. I'm curious to see if there is a clearing of Trump whether or not DeSantis can go toe to toe with uh, some of the others who will not treat him the way they would treat Trump. <laughs> In other words, they will, they will not go quietly into that good night against Ron DeSantis because there's a lot to pick at there, number one. And number two, DeSantis has a, a jaw made of stone glass, nothing but glass. I watched him in that debate against um, Charlie Chris and, and sat there and went, oh my God, this guy's never been hit before. Um, and you can see it. He's churlish. He's, he, he, you know, he doesn't smile. He is not going to engage the American people. And you can't fake that. Steve knows, I know, who worked with presidential candidates, worked with candidates who were running for dog catcher, for God's sake. If you don't know how to treat the dogs, guess what? You're not going to win the office. If you don't know how to smile and engage voters, that for, that's like grade one, right? Engagement. How are you going to do when the going gets really tough and your opponents are piling on? So to Steve's point, yeah, DeSantis is the lead, but that can be easily taken from him. Um, and right now inside the GOP, I'll say this as a final point. They're a get what saw. We saw that with the race for chairman um, between... Um, uh, Harmeet and, and Rana, that inside the political organs, there is a fight, a fight that Steve and I know have been going on for well over 35, 40 years. And that's still going to get played out, whether Trump is there or not, it's going to get played out. And I think we may see it sooner in this presidential cycle if Trump, especially if he steps aside. Um, so just get your popcorn. It's going to be, <laughs> I would just, it's going to be something. I would I'll just like add to that. I'll, I'll just kind of do this like analysis of it. You know, Michael became the chairman of the Republican Party at a really odd time, mm -hmm. um, you know, which is which is when Republicans were completely out of power. Right. Didn't didn't have a hold of the House, lost control in the House, the Senate and the White House. And in that moment in time, um, what became the, the center of power of the party was Fox News. And 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 the and the and the ultimate emperor of the party was Roger Ailes, and every elected member of Congress was terrified of Roger Ailes, with few exceptions, including Michael Steele, mm -hmm. right? And and Michael Steele, you know, got hit a lot because of that. But but at the end of the day, every single one of these Republicans would would have would have pushed their moms off the edge of the cliff. <laughs> to avoid pissing off Roger Ailes. The king is dead, long live the king. Yeah. Who took out Roger Ailes? It was Donald Trump. Donald Trump did it when he attacked Megyn Kelly and Roger Ailes said he'd teach Trump a lesson and the Fox viewers liked Trump more than they liked Roger Ailes, proving the wisdom, once again, of John Kennedy's admonition about the danger of riding tigers for the pursuit of power is often you wind up inside the tiger's belly. 
the person who has defenestrated Donald Trump without punching him, without squabbling with him, is Ron DeSantis. And the way that you know he's on top is because the grifter class, one, and two, the donor class, the hedge fund billionaires, are all in Tallahassee, not with Trump at Mar-a-Lago. That's where he had Dick Morris, Madison Cawthorn, and the My Pillow guy in the front row. So there's going to be 30% of the Republican Party that will always be Trump. And every day in the race, there's going to be a debate at the DeSantis headquarters saying, well, we have to attack him. And someone else is going to say, but if you hit him too hard, he's going to run as a third party candidate. And then they're going to say, you have to attack him. Someone's going to say, but if you hit him and make him mad, he's going to run as a third party candidate. So Trump's going to run the entire time with a gun to the head of the party saying, I'll go independent. He'll start it immediately. The press will try to pin him down, but they never will. In the end, I think DeSantis is the nominee. Um, I think that he will has already taken Trump out, but I think we'll see Trump be influential. Uh, the press will continue to cover it. It's madness. It's political extremism. But there's billions of dollars to be made from the Trump industrial complex in the show. So we will be subjected to more of it. This party, there, there is, there were two people, Liz Cheney mm -hmm. and Adam Kitzinger, and now those two people are gone. So, so it is the entirety, not of every Republican in the country, but of every Republican mostly who's been elected to office in the country and all of the Republicans in the House with extraordinarily few exceptions, most of the Republicans in the Senate and a lot of Republican governors. And so if you don't have the guts and the courage to look a political extremist who's a white nationalist in the eye mm. um, and call them out, this isn't the business for you. Um, Donald Trump sat down at dinner with a Nazi, Nick Fuentes. Nick Fuentes has 50 Nazi groups on college campuses that are increasingly linked to the Charlie Kirk extremist mm. youth movement. This is serious business all over the country. I don't think it's particularly confronted effectively, um, but we have a, a big fight in our culture uh, that goes to the heart of pluralism, democracy, liberty, and human rights values uh, that we're going to be fighting for as far as the eye can see, because this extremist movement has been let loose, and it is in open alliance with the elements of the Republican Party that we've talked about. I mean, you have a white nationalist fringe extremist coalition that is part of the Republican coalition. And there, there's no denying that whatsoever. And so, so long as that is the case, and until those people are repudiated and kicked out, there is no place to compromise because there is no room to compromise with a Nazi ever.